Good morning. Welcome to Fear Part 10. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, we just come to you this morning. And we ask that you just come in our lives and help us remove any fear in our hearts. Help us to understand what it means to be afraid. To be having the fear of God and not the fear of man. Let us understand today what you want to do in our lives. How you want to transform us from the inside out. How you want to set us free from the things that have come in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Who shall I fear? Who shall I fear? May we be able to stand fast on what God is doing today so we're not afraid of what comes. That we're not over captive by fear and anxiety. A.B. Simpson says, Fear is born of Satan, and if we could only take time to think of a moment, we'd be seeing everything Satan tries to do, and everything is founded upon his falsehoods, upon his belief system, upon what he's doing in his life, upon how he wants to try and destroy your life. Do you understand, church, what that means today? How you're focusing in on the problems of the world and what the world wants to say? If we look at Hebrews chapter 1, and it's all about God's establishment here, and how He wants to focus everything. And verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve those who are going to inherit salvation? It talks about how the establishment of the earth that we're supposed to be focusing in on what Christ wants to do in our lives. But if we don't do this, if we don't move in that way that God wants to, then what happens? How do we operate? Where do we go? And how do we get there? And why do we get there? And what is it that we're doing? Of course not. If you fall away. If you look at Romans 8.28, it says, We know all things work together for those who... Who love God and are called according to his purpose. Verse 37. No, and all these things were more than conquerors to him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do we believe that today? Do we believe what God wants to do? Do we believe in how Christ wants to transform our lives? Or are we stuck? Are we stuck in the fear of our life? Are we stuck in what happens and who we are? Are you the underdog of Christianity today? I'm so weak and I'm so tired It's hard for me to find enough strength to feed the fires that fool my ego Inconsequently All my pride is overdone Which leads me Down on my knees Back to the place I should have started from Been beat up Been broken down Don't ever know when you're face down On the ground I'm in last place If I place it all There's this hook for this underdog That's the way uh-huh, we like it Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh That's the way Uh-huh, we like it Yeah, call me the underdog I'm in this race to win a prize The odds against me This world has plans for my demise But what they don't see is that a winner is not just by his mouth size But by the substitute he picks to run the race of mine Already won Been beat up, 
been broken down Don't end up with no fist down on the ground I'm in last place, in the place at all But this hook for this underdog There's the way, uh-huh, we like it Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh There's the way, uh-huh, we like it Uh-huh, uh-huh Been beat up been broken down, been living up with your face down on the ground. I'm in last place, in the place it all, but there's hope for this on the dog. That's the way, uh huh, we like it. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. That's the way, uh huh, we like it. That's the way, that's the way, that's the way. That's the way we like it. Are you like the underdog today? You just keep having so many things happen to you in your life and you don't know what to do and you don't know where to go and you're just frustrated with life. Because so many things keep happening and you're like, what is going on, God? I can't understand this. Look at Romans chapter 8 again and verse 15. It says, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. You received a spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may be glorified by him. Are we glorified by what Christ is doing? Are we doing the places and moving the ways that God is telling us to move? Or are we falling apart in such a way that we're not getting to the next step that God has called us to? Because something else occurred in our lives. And it's causing us to fall apart. It's causing us to give up. It's causing us to say, well, um, Jeremy, I don't know. Um, I, I, can't, I can't grasp this. I can't... I can't understand. And that's a lot of things that the devil does. It's a lot of can'ts. You get into a moment where you're trying to move in that place that God has called you to. And then fear comes and it stops you from going any further. And you're all like, okay, God, well, what is it you're wanting to do? How are you wanting to move the mountains of valleys called my life? How are you wanting to guide and direct us? To that next step. Where are you trying to lead me to? What is it you're trying to say? Well. If you look at Colossians 4. Verse 6 says. Let your speech always be gracious. Season with salt. So that you may know how you should answer each person. See fear can cause you. To express the wrong conversations. It can cause you to conversate in such a way. That you say the wrong thing. If someone has a bad attitude. And you go to like a performance review and your manager has a bad attitude or you have the bad attitude. How's that going to turn out? It's going to turn out horrible for the both of you. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be awkward. Same thing can be said about our relationships. Fear causes people to fall apart. It causes people to give up. And why do they give up? Because so much stuff happens in people's lives and they're not listening to what God is telling them to. Why? Because the world says you should be afraid. You should be afraid of everything under the sun. You should be upset about everything that is coming your way. No matter what the topic is, no matter how it's supposed to be done, fear is supposed to tell you, okay, give up. Now you go to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. It says, But Christ has appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come in the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is, not of the of this creation. He entered the most holy place once for all time, not by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. See, God is trying to transform us in such a way that we understand what he's wanting to do and how he wants us to get there and what we're supposed to do. But when you fall to the wayside and you fall off the track and you're not listening and you give up, and you give up in such a way that it just completely gives your life no place to move. What happens? You leave God out of the equation. 
Psalms 46, 1 and 2 says, God is a refuge and strength. The helper is always found in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not be afraid, through though the earth trembles and the mountains topple into the depths of the seas. Though the water roars and foams, the mountains quake with its turmoil. What does that mean, Jeremy? Well, it means that God is going to come in such a way in your life that he's going to sit here and allow things to happen. But guess what? He's not going to let these things stop you. He's not going to let this stuff come in your life in such a way that you don't have an outlet, that you don't have a way to deal with the problems that come. Because God is going to transform your life. He's going to set you free from the cares of this world. John 3, verse 6. Whatever is born in the flesh is flesh. What is born in the spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you that you must be born again. The wind blows where it pleases. You hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everything born in the spirit. How can these things be, teacher? Nicodemus asked. Are you a teacher of Israel? Don't you know these things? Jesus replied, Truthfully I tell you, we speak what we know and what we testify to what we have seen. But you do not accept our testimony if you have... I told you about earthly things and you don't believe. How will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except for the one who ascended from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up a snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And of course the famous John, verse 16, For God so loved the world in this way he gave his only begotten Son so everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Anyone who believes in Him is not condemned, but anyone who does not believe is already condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. This is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and the people love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds are evil. For everyone who, who does evil hates the light and avoids it, so his deeds may not be exposed. But anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light so that his works may be shown according to be accomplished by God. Do we understand what God's will is today and how he wants to move and what he wants to do? Or are we still struggling? Here's, here's the final verse. Fear is not what you're supposed to be, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages. No. No, fear is not what you're supposed to be. No. What does it say in John chapter, uh, excuse me, Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to what? To preach the good news. What is the good news? The gospel of Jesus Christ. To fulfill the great commission. To the poor. He has sent me. He has sent you and you and you and you and you and all of us. To what? To proclaim release to the captives, to recover of sight, to the blind, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Do you understand? And then later in the verses, like verse 21, he says, Today the scripture has been fulfilled. Today this is happening. Verse 24, it also says, a prophet and others may not even be accepted in, uh, is accepted in, his, no prophet is accepted in his own hometown. So there are certain of us that we might have to leave, like I had to leave, and go somewhere else and spread the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ. Fear should not be the operator of who we are. You want revival to come. See, the problem is so many churches want revival to come, and they don't want restoration to come after revival. Jeremy, what is restoration and revival? Revival is where you see a lot of people talking about, I'm going to read my Bible, I'm going to get saved, I'm going to rededicate my life. Restoration is a consistency of a group of Christians that are praying, fasting, reading the Bible, you know, casting out demons, healing people, doing the things that God has called us to do. When the Holy Ghost has come upon us, we allow the Holy Ghost to come into our lives. We have Him living in our life. And there are a lot of dead churches today that they're just going on a Sunday morning experience and you got six days not doing anything else. You might have a message being sent, you know, in an email or something. There's not a whole lot of stuff going on. Why? Because people aren't wanting to put forth the work into it. See, the Bible that I read says that the relationship with Christ and what we do with God is supposed to be a daily event. And the problem is we've placed 
worship leaders and we place ministers on a pedestal to where we think we only get fed on a Sunday or Wednesday. No, you should be getting fed seven days a week all the time. You should be having Christian music playing. You should be singing along. I don't care if you can sing a tune. That doesn't matter. Neither does God. You should read the Bible. Well, Jeremy, I don't understand the Bible. Okay, when's the last time you asked someone a question about the Bible that wasn't an argumentative debate and it wasn't my opinion is that I don't like the Bible? When did you actually ask a question to learn about what the Bible says? There are a group of people out there today that are not asking questions. They're not seeking what God wants to do. And then there's those of us that are. I got like 20,000 emails I got to go through today. I had 150,000 emails I've had to go through. I got 20,000 more of those to go through. Still left. Of people asking questions and different things. That I'm trying to respond to. So people are asking stuff. People are wanting to seek questions about what God is doing. Some of those are media stuff and everything else. All piled up in between. But the point is. Things are about to get really busy. As this plague in America is coming to an end and coming to an end across the globe, there are other things that are going to take its place in the future. And the church needs to be ready to be able to speak up. And it's not just going to be the pastor or the deacon or the youth pastor or the worship leader. It's going to be every member of the body of Christ will be acting and facilitating and conversating in what God wants to do and how Christ wants to transform our lives. And you're going to be able to testify what he's done in your life to someone else. You'll be on Facebook Lives. You're going to be sending emails and text messages. You're going to be having conversations in your house. Here in America, there will be house churches opening up. I've been aware there are house churches in America since 1996. And I've conversated with a few of them when I was at Team Mania at the Honor Academy in the year 2000. Some of them when I was in the Salvation Army in 2002. Some of them when I was in the military in California in 2006. And even here in Ohio. So things are going to continue to change. Things are going to continue to grow. And fear operates in such a way where those things won't happen. You won't think that you're good enough. You won't think that you have enough. You will feel inadequate. You will feel less than who you are. And you want revival to come? You want God to transform your life today? What are you going to do? How are you going to stand up? Are you going to sit here and just let the devil speak out? He's already doing a good job all over the media. He has more movies and more books written. And has a lot of followers. So what is your challenge today? My challenge to you today is to spread the gospel to everyone. I said 4 to 10 p.m. One hour of prayer. One hour reading the Bible. One hour talking about it. Talking about saving God's gonna move and there ain't no doubt Oh, 
God's gonna move and there ain't no doubt Come on with me Come on with me Yeah And I'm out of here looking for revival In our own hearts and across the land And I'm out of here looking for revival Lift up your voice and say amen Oh, lift up your voice and say amen in them out of here looking for a revival In our own hearts and across the land In them out of here looking for a revival Lift up your voice and say amen Lift up your voice and say amen Are you going to be a person that God will use today for his message for the gospel to be spread across America, across wherever you live, because I have friends on every continent on here, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Or are we going to just fall apart? Are we going to allow fear to hold us back and say, well, you know, I'm scared, you know, the virus. I'm scared of this. I'm scared of government. I'm scared of, I don't know, fill in the blank. What are you scared of today? Or are you going to be able to stand up and say, yes, God, I'm going to go out. I'm going to send out your message. I'm going to be the hands and feet you call me to. I'm going to sing of who you are. And no matter what happens, I will trust in you today. Are you able to sing when you're persecuted? Are you able to sing when you've been told no? Maybe you've been told to wait. Are you able to sing to God when you are scared? See, to stop the emotion of fear is you have to start speaking something different than the fear. To stop feeling the way of fear, you have to replace the fear with something else. So sing with me today. Over the mountains and the seas, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart. And let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing When your love came down I can sing of your love forever 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 Oh, I feel like dancing This foolishness I knew When the world is seen my life We'll dance with joy like we're dancing now Over the mountains and the seas Your river runs with love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands I will always sing when your love came down I can sing of your love forever 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 Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you today and we just ask you to lead us to that place that you want us to go next. That we understand where you want us to be and how you want us to be and how you want us to communicate, what you want us to think about today. And what are the next moments in our lives where we're supposed to speak up for what we believe and how we believe. That fear should only be the fear of the Lord, not the fear of man, not the fear of government, not the fear of illness. Why? We have wisdom of things that happen and we have to make decisions. It can't be a decision of fear. And this is a fear of, I need to protect my family, I need to protect my belongings, I need to be wise with what I have. 
We need to be able to speak up with boldness today of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That Christians that aren't in leadership should be able to understand what they mean when they say, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, I got baptized, I read my Bible, I pray, I like to sing to God. We need to be able to understand these kinds of questions today. We need to be able to understand how to lead someone to Christ, how to share our testimonies, how to operate in what God wants to do in our lives. There are many things that are going to happen all across the globe today, Lord. Opportunities to show Christ, share Christ, speak Christ, think of Christ. We're planting seeds and we're harvesting seeds and we're watering seeds and we're watering plants. And some of us are picking the fruit off the vines. And sometimes we do that all day long with the same person. As we sow happy thoughts in someone's life. As we sow joy and, and laughter in someone's life. As we bring food in someone's life. There's multiple opportunities here that continue to go from day in and day out. So God, let us not have fear and anxiety. Let us focus in on what you were going to do in our lives today. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Purify our minds, our hearts, our thoughts, and our words. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we pray amen and amen. This is the last part of fear. I'll upload this here shortly. We'll be starting a new series about peace tomorrow morning. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.